Hi guys, welcome to the electronics lectures. Today we will learn how exactly a capacitor passes alternating current and blocks direct current. Let's start straight from practice and connect DC voltage source to a capacitor through a switch to have opportunity to connect and disconnect it. When we close the switch, voltage across capacitor increases. Charges from one plate of capacitor flow to another plate. We simply charge the capacitor. What does it mean? It means that capacitor allows current to flow even if we have a DC voltage source, but only at the beginning, when capacitor initially is discharged. After some time, when the voltage across capacitor and voltage source become equal, current stops. Above mentioned can be concluded in the most important capacitor rule. Current through a capacitor is proportional to a voltage change across its plates and its capacitance, and can be written as a formula. Greater capacitance value means higher current. But what interests us more is the second part. Time derivative of voltage means the instantaneous voltage change over time or volts per second. Higher voltage per second rate means higher current through a capacitor. And it seems very logical. Imagine you transferring 1000 charges from one plate to another. If you transfer them fast, which is equal to a high current, voltage across capacitor plates will also rise fast. But why do I discuss all this basic capacitor boring stuff when you just wanted to know how does a capacitor let AC current flow? Because now you will easily understand how. So let's again charge capacitor with a DC voltage source, but in this time, after it charges, we will connect it to the second voltage source. That is in opposite to the first. And repeat this process. What is happening now? Current is flowing in both directions through a capacitor. And you may have guessed already that in reality, current doesn't go directly through a capacitor and it's dielectric. When we talk about current through a capacitor, we mean charges that flow from one plate of a capacitor to another and then backwards every time we change the polarity of a voltage source. That causes the change of charge in time and, respectively, current flow. This is why the capacitor doesn't allow direct current to flow. When you apply DC, charges just sit on one plate and that's it. The electric blocks their movement. But when you apply AC, Charge between plates move in different directions. Now I can delete the separate voltage sources and add one of sinusoidal form that in fact will do the same job here. It will change voltage polarity across capacitor. As you can see, when you apply a C voltage source, there is an alternative current occurs. Let's now adjust value of a capacitor and look at the current. Higher capacity allows higher current to flow and vice versa. What happens now if we change the frequency of sinusoidal signal? By increasing frequency, we increase voltage per second rating. And again, current through a capacitor increases. To exactly calculate this current, there is another formula of a capacitor reactance, which is analog of a resistance in DC circuits. Reactance measurement unit is ohms, same as resistance where P is constant and F is frequency of a signal. As you can see from the formula, the higher capacity means lower reactance and higher current. Same for frequency. Higher frequency means lower reactance and higher current. And now we can easily calculate capacitor current, for example, using Ohm's law. Enough this theory, we need some practice and calculations. Let's assume we have a 230 volts AC voltage source on the input of frequency 50 Hz. And this source is connected to a capacitor of 1 microfarad. And we just simply need to calculate current through it. Using Ohm's law, we divide voltage 230 volts into reactance of our capacitor. Reactance will be equal to 3183 ohms. And using such a simple equation, current will be equal to 72 milliamps. And you might say, what is this value if you have an alternative current? How it can be constant? It changes all time. But in reality, counted value is the root mean square value of a signal. Same for a voltage source of 230 volts. It is also RMS value. Exactly that value multimeter will show you. But what does it mean? How can we understand root mean square value? From physics point of view, RMS value means that it delivers same power to the load as a DC signal of the same value. For example, you take a resistor and apply to it 230 volts AC and 230 volts DC. Same power will be delivered to the resistor, it will heat up to the same temperature. But wait, if 230 volts isn't the maximum, what is the maximum then? To define a maximum or peak value of a sinusoidal signal, you need to multiply its RMS value to the square root of 2. And vice versa, to define average, divide peak value by square root of 2. That means that maximum current in circuit will be equal to 102 milliamps. 
And you may have noticed that I used value of 230 volts, same as Europe Grid uses to point out that you encounter this value every day, usually even without noticing it. Peak voltage in your socket at home can be square root of 2 multiplied by 230, which is equal to 325 volts. Plus, there is always some deviation around plus minus 5%, and in reality, voltage in grid can be even more, up to 340 volts. Why I'm saying this? To emphasize that if you put a capacitor in parallel to such a voltage source, maximum voltage of a capacitor should be not lower than 350 volts, or it will just explode. When we apply AC voltage to a capacitor, voltage across its plates lagging for a quarter period or 90 degrees of sinusoidal signal relatively to current. But why is this happening? The simple answer is in the physics processes that occurs in capacitor when you apply voltage. You remember, if the current flows between capacitor plates, voltage grows. And when you precisely look at this graph, you will see that when the current is negative, voltage across capacitor decreases, and when positive, increases. That is a simple explanation. When you charge capacitor in one direction, its voltage grow, and if you charge it in another direction, voltage decreases. Thanks for watching, subscribe and check out other videos on this channel, for example about different types of capacitors. If you have any questions left, ask in the comments. Bye!